I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us as we always do. And today we have Marjana Hoffines. Mm -hmm. Pretty name. Thank so you. You're uh, you were born where? <laughs> born and raised in Poland. Were you? Okay. Um, it's came a Polish to the United name States then. Yeah. When I was about 13. Oh, you did? With your family? My mom and dad. I'm yeah. the only child. Oh, okay. Now, were they LDS? No. Oh, They're were Roman they? Catholic. Okay. A lot of, in Poland, a lot of people are right. Roman Catholic, right? Majority is yeah. Roman Catholic. So you were raised in Catholicism, I yes. guess. And and at age 13, you guys come to America? Mm -hmm. Wow. And so what happens? Uh, I mean, you, I guess you go to church continually before that, or were you pretty active? Before and, that, yes. Yeah. Um, after coming to the United States, I was more busy trying to learn the language and help my parents oh. with their life and because oh, yeah. none of us spoke English. Um, now, did so, you take English in, in school, though, at all? Well, just here in school. So oh, I here, mostly sat in the back of the classroom and doodled. Oh. Because <laughs> I didn't well, you, speak any You English. sound wonderful now. It's, Thank you. Uh, yeah, they sound excellent. So I know kids in Denmark and other, some of the countries learn English, at least in their middle school or high Poland school. Poland being or, communist, you know, oh, socialist country, day, yeah. we were not allowed to learn English. Kids in, po in Polish schools had to learn oh, Russian okay. as a second language. Okay, so where did you move to? We moved, so when we defected from Poland, we moved oh. to Austria. Boy, there's we, a whole story there, I'll bet. But that's <laughs> a whole, whole story. We went to Austria. Um, and we lived in a refugee camp for about a year My. before we got led into the United States. Yeah. Um, and then we, we came to a little Catholic parish in Lexington, Virginia, uh, sponsored us. Yeah. So we moved to Lexington. Mm. Little small town, and then from there we moved to Buffalo, New York. My parents were trying to find a place to to be employed, and uh, Lexington is just a little town with no industry. Yeah, so, yeah. so we moved to Buffalo, New York. Right, we stayed there for about a year, and then um, came to Salt Lake. Oh, really? After that, what brought you to Salt Lake? Work. Uh, work for, for you. For my parents, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents okay. had some friends that lived in Salt Lake, and they okay. said might be easier to find work. So moved did to Salt you Lake. keep going then to Catholic? Uh, yes, my parents mostly almost. did. I would come occasionally with mom and dad, and I was a rebellious child, so okay. <laughs> I had other ideas. Yeah. Um, okay. But, so, did you go to where did you go to high school then? Oh gosh, I went to South High School. It used to be a high school. No, it's no longer there. But South I High. Went to South Here in Salt Lake. High. Yeah, I went oh, to South I went. High. Then I transferred to. East High, okay. and then from East High I went to Granite High School, oh. and that's where I graduated from. Oh, and they've just torn that one down, darn it. Have you seen that? <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so after high school, what happens to you? And uh, Well, I decided to go to the University of Utah mm -hmm. and um, met my wonderful husband up at the U. Okay. And he... If he were here, he would testify that I was stalking him. <laughs> <laughs> and so, he was LDS, was he? He was LDS. Okay. Um, it didn't me mean much to me. I, I knew he believed in God, so... Had um, you heard much about the Mormon church? No, nothing. Even, nothing. even living here? For even living here, I wasn't really... I was just being a young kid, I wasn't really oh, okay. interested much. I had friends that were LDS, sure. but we never discussed religion, religion okay. per se. So did he, when you started dating or at least interacting, did he mention how he wanted you to, we, or he needed to marry in the temple or something? We were taking a class together up at the U called uh, Music and Culture. Okay. And um, 
I saw him walk in the room, and that very second, I knew deep inside that that's the man I'm supposed to marry. Really? That was one of those, huh? One of those. Um, uh, well, then later on, it was, it was before the weekend, and after the weekend, I've, um, I thought about him the whole weekend, <laughs> and I just knew I had to get to know him, and saw him in class the following week, and he sat down next to me. We were waiting for the class to start, and he asked me if I had notes from the previous week because he Goodness. wasn't able to make it one yeah. day, and I said yes, and we signed up to go see concerts for the class, and I said, well, you haven't been here, so you are going to miss, you know, you have to attend certain musical concerts for this class, and I said, well, by the way, I have tickets. So if you'd like, you can come with me. So I kind of asked him out. <laughs> this is where the stocking comes in a little bit. Huh? So he said, yes, if you have tickets, then I'll buy dinner. And that's okay. how we start, started dating. Start dating. Mm -hmm. Now, at some point, I guess you become Mormon. You become LDS. Does he encourage that, I guess, I'm sure? We were or? dating for almost a year, and it was uh, Valentine's Day, and my husband gave me the Book of Mormon for okay. a Valentine's Day gift. <laughs> He's a return missionary. He's okay. been on a mission, LDS mission to Brazil. Okay. And he gave me the book and said, you know, I want you to, if you interested, I want you to look into this and find yeah. out for yourself right. and read. So I thought, okay. And he was a very nice man, um, kind and generous, just a, a super wonderful soul. Um, and so I thought, well, he believes in God, so how wrong can it be? Here's a man that, yeah. that truly loves Jesus and, and he loves yeah. God. And, and so I thought, you know, he deserves a chance. So I looked at the Book of Mormon, read a little bit, and I thought, well, maybe this is okay. <laughs> and then he said, would you like to see the missionaries? And I said, okay, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So he searched high and low to find a Polish missionary really? in Utah because I told him, I said, you know, religion's very difficult for me. It's very personal. And so um, I don't know that anyone that's foreign can understand um, that isn't my foreign, side of the story. Yeah, that Someone is. that's foreign to right. me, like oh, an American, might right. not understand where I come from, sure. where Catholicism is very much a way of life. Right. And so he said, okay, I will see if I can find a Polish missionary. And he did. Answer to prayers, of course. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so I took the discussions and I told my husband, I've read a few chapters of the Book of Mormon, but not, I didn't get into depth of it. And he said, well, you just got to pray about it. And when you get the burning in the bosom and <laughs> all that, you'll know it's true. Okay. So I did and I prayed and I didn't get the burning. Oh, you didn't. But I thought, well, he's a good man. So perhaps that will come eventually that I can trust. Okay. And so I trust him as a man and as, sure. as a friend. And so I thought, I'll just give, give it a chance. <laughs> yeah. And I asked him if he would like to baptize me into the oh. LDS church. And he did. And Happily? he did. He okay. was more than happy to do it. <laughs> His family was really happy. We'd been then dating for almost a year. So natural progression was, yeah. we were... And we were you married then in the temple? No, since I was just new convert, I had, I had to, to, wait to wait a, a year. Wait a year, okay. And so we got it. We had a civil marriage. Okay. And um, in a couple of months, we got engaged. Literally, like um, October by December, we were married. Okay. And so. So a year later, after baptism, you get married in the Salt Lake Temple. Right. Okay. Right. I I was. And how was that was for okay. you? Very difficult. Oh. Uh, I was asked by everyone what my favorite part was <laughs> or what I enjoyed most about the, the temple. Um, and it was really difficult mm. because it was very confusing. Yeah. Very difficult. It, it was full of rules <laughs> and, and things. I felt like it was hoops to jump through. Really? And, um, and I didn't understand. Right. I just didn't understand. It was, we got, and so... I basically, I told my husband, I said, oh, my favorite part was really the anointing part. Oh. 
<laughs> you said that. And he looked at me like I was strange. What would that be your favorite? I said, I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I have no answer. That's yeah. the only thing that I could actually remember that had an impact <laughs> on me, perhaps. That's because you well, dressed down and. That's right. Uh, yeah, it's kind that's of right. weird, right? That's right. It was weird. But it is memorable. I'm, so I'm that was say. one part I remembered, but the rest was really. But it's kind of like the Book of Mormon experience. You just uh, stick with it and mm -hmm. it'll come to you and you'll feel right. better about right. it and all that. Right. So you, then you're active in the church, are you, with your husband? And Well, we, we begin to go to church and we had a, uh, basically a date set kind of for a year later to be married yeah. in the temple. Yeah. So I did um, begin to go to church yeah. and was... I remember I was asked after my baptism to bear my testimony sure. in the testimony meeting. And it was very difficult because I did not have one right. of Joseph Smith or the LDS Church or the prophets. So when I got up to bear my testimony, all I testified to was that Jesus was my Savior. Wow. <laughs> and I was so nervous. And when I got back, and sat down. I remember I was, there, I was asked to also give it little, a little talk. I asked my husband, what did I say? <laughs> he said, you're fine. I said, well, did I say what I was supposed to say? And he said, yeah, you're fine. So, and I kept asking, I don't think I said what I was supposed to say, because I remember only saying one thing, testifying to one thing, but not the others. And everybody else, the example is everybody always gives the testimony of yeah, Book Joseph of Mormon Smith and, and the Book prophets of and, and, and things. Yeah, yeah. And so it was really interesting to me. That was the only thing. And he says, that's okay. That'll come. And I said, how is it going to come? Why don't I have the testimony? Everybody around me seems to be comfortable with their testimonies. I'm not. What's wrong with me? Yeah. He said, well, as we go into, we go to the temple more often, you will gain a testimony. Yeah. Serve in come. the church, and the more right. you read, it The more you come. read, the more you serve, yeah. the more we go to the temple, it will come. Yeah. So I left it at that. <laughs> and how long did that go on? Um, well, we got married in the temple. My husband's family very excited. They're a big LDS family. Sure. He's out of uh, from a home of twelve children. Wow. So big family. Yeah. Uh, I'm the only child, so it's a culture shock. <laughs> <laughs> so that many people around. Yeah. I still have a hard time with names. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we did, and we mostly went to sacrament meeting, but not the full. Oh. The full. Relief Society yes. and Sunday school. I had a very hard time with it. Mm. I was like, this is so long. Why do I have to be there for so long? So we mostly went to sacrament meeting. Oh, and he was okay with that, I he guess? He was okay so. with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a couple of children. Mm -hmm. And then, so what happens now in life? Well, my first um, son is born, and we still go to the LDS church on Sunday. And I'm holding my little little boy. He's about six months old. And this dread and this, this feeling of sorrow came over me. And I started the thought of my son is not going to know who God is came over me. Wow. This isn't the truth. And I'm supposed to teach my boy about Jesus. And he's not going to know who he is. You didn't sense that you were getting that message of Jesus? In yes, the I wasn't. I wasn't, but there was, Jesus was kind of far behind. He was there, but he was in the background. He wasn't in the foreground. He wasn't the center. And Isn't that's, that and I was craving Jesus. I was craving him. How many, I, I how many him. LDS do you think actually feel that and either ignore it or um, you think people I think that they that trust sometimes? the church so much since they believe that it is the only true church. They trust that message so much that you know, oh, it's okay. Yeah. As long as it's the true church, then it is what it is. I think they just probably ignore it. And they don't, they don't really, uh, from our perspective, mm -hmm. they really don't worship Jesus as the biblical Jesus. Right. But I think if we were to say to them, you don't worship the biblical Jesus, they would say, no, you're wrong. Yes. Right? I mean, I, I've had very... discussions with <laughs> missionaries since I became a Christian because they came to my door. Our, our bishop lives 
close. live across the street, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> basically. So I've had missionaries come to our oh boy. our home and frequently. Yeah. And so I've had many discussions. <laughs> so what uh, what starts you on your journey? The thought that my child needs to know the truth. That really was it. Yes, it was the. And, I, I, there's a scripture that talks about how mothers are to raise their children. You know, fathers are not to exasperate their children, children but mothers are to be right. talking about Jesus when they go for a walk and right. when they wake up and, and they go to sleep. So I took that very literally. That was my job. Yeah. I needed to teach my kids about Jesus. And since I didn't know him, did I had you, to find out who he was. Wow. And what did you do? I began a journey of um, <clears throat> basically studying scripture, Bible verses, um, more Book of Mormon, Pearl of Great Price, all the writings. Really? I began to go on LDS.org, MRM. Is it com or org? I always forget. Uh, Mormon MRM. Research org, Ministry. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I had my Bible that my uh, mother-in-law and my father-in-law gave me when I was when I got baptized, okay. and it had all the had the quad in it, so <laughs> it was downstairs in our basement. So I would go downstairs and, and study and, and read, and I started to have many many questions. And I felt like my husband, who was a return missionary, he should know all of this, right? He, yeah. he has the information. So, so you asked who him? better to ask than my best friend? Yeah, and he would answer, "I don't know about that. I've never heard that. Where did you find that?" Like you were like, challenging yes, him. Yes, it to... would challenge him, and he would get a little upset. He, he's a very kind and soft-spoken man, so he's never really angry, but yeah. I could tell that it bothered Put him, him that I had all these questions. Put him on the defensive or yes, something? Yes, very much so. And I said, honey, I just, I just want to know, just because I don't know, and you're my best friend, and I feel like you, you probably know this. I don't know. I've never heard that. And so I would challenge but, but him. But it was right there. Right? And it was right there, black and white. Honey, what about Joseph Smith? What about all these wives? What about polyandry and women? And he's like, I've never heard that. I've never been taught that. And I was just like, why isn't he open with me? Just talk to me. I'm your wife. I'm, your, I'm yeah. supposed to be your best friend. Just and curious. He, he did, couldn't. did you know anything about masonry at that oh, point yes, in absolutely. the temple? Did you ask oh, I him started about to. that? In the Book of Abraham, and absolutely. I mean, there's just so many there's things. Just I know we so much. gloss over those That's sometimes right. in our interviews, but That's there's right. so many things that need to be looked at. And why don't you think Mormons study any more than they do? I mean, it's just like your husband. He's so. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, he would never have looked on his would, own. He was taught right? that. You know, the, the Bible, you can only trust it as long as it's been translated correctly. Yeah. So how can you trust something that you're told yeah. may not be correct? Yeah. And so so you, just, you kind of just put it in the back of your, yeah. yes, it's there, but it's not the main book because you can't quite trust it. So you kept looking and looking mm -hmm. and did you... I became obsessed. Did you? To, and studied. And, yes. Oh, that's dangerous. Yes. Dangerous. <laughs> I started reading uh, No One Knows My History. Oh, about Joseph the Fon Smith. Brody book. Yes. And, yeah. um, and really what really, what book was my, is my favorite that really got me over the threshold. Just knowing that I'm on the right track was, oddly enough, uh, Lynn um, Wilders. Uh, Wilders. Unveiling Grace. Unveiling Grace. Yeah. I felt powerful. like my story was similar to that. A little bit similar. And yeah. I, I felt, I cried with her. I laughed with her really? as I read. And I, Yes. Have you I met just, her since? No, I've never met her. Oh, because she did, I think, come out to Grace Community at, you know, the, the, the Adams Road people. But anyway, right, right. so you study, you study, you talk to your husband. Did you ever talk to the bishop or state president, no. anybody? No. So, no. your husband? I, I was on my own, and yeah. I began to really take it seriously. And I couldn't talk to my husband about it because he was, he, he wouldn't open up. He wouldn't talk to me. Oh, boy. So what happens? You have, well, is this when you have your moment? I, ha I have a dear friend who says, come to church with us. And our church, South Mountain Community, where we currently attend, was in a warehouse, um, held in the warehouse. We didn't have our um, right. church building. building so yeah. she invited us and we went. And I thought, this is crazy. The music was loud. The scriptures were on the screen. And I thought, this is 
but something strangely enough, it was strange, but comfortable. Felt like you were worshiping Jesus. Yes. It was all <laughs> about him and I have missed him. <laughs> I've been craving him like a baby craves milk. Oh. Um, I needed him so much in my life. And um, you thought maybe this yes. is where I could show my child. Yes. And Jesus. My, my friend said to me, why don't you come with us? And I said, you know, it's too far. We don't, I don't want to drive there. She left it alone. I said, my family's not going to want to do this. So um, she calls me one day and says, well, guess what? There's going to be a church built. And it is two minutes from my house. In Draper. And I said, really, Jesus, you can do that too? <laughs> <laughs> you built me a church. So at that point, I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I said, you, you, this is it. Oh. And um, so that's going to be our home. And it has been ever since. Well, now you shared a, briefly just a, a little experience you had. So you want to share that with so us? So my born again... So when I, I knew that I was now following Jesus and I was going to give my life to him, um, I was waking up for a period of time in kind of a terror in the middle of the night. I would wake up around 3 o'clock in the morning and just be full of dread and, and just not, not feeling myself. Just uh, And when was this? At the, after your studying? After, after. yes. Because you studied for like nine years. Yes. Okay, so go yes. ahead. So now you're talking. Oh, now you're waking yes, up. It's and, grueling. And you're troubled and turmoil. I wanted to know. Yeah. I wanted to know the truth. Okay. And it, whatever it took, I was going to get there. Okay. So, um, so we, I, I woke up and that morning it was a beautiful morning. It was spring. And I walked out in my backyard and I'm walking around, and I start to see images because I kept saying, Lord, I can't. I want to follow you, but how, how can you take me back? I've done so many wrong things in my life. Um, all these mistakes. You can't love me. You can't possibly love me and accept me. Mm -hmm. And pictures were appearing in my head, just in my mind's eye, of everything that I thought was a mistake or, or something I've done wrong. And I started to get a peaceful feeling like it was okay. And then I saw a picture of, in my mind, of a hand reaching down and the words, welcome home, child. I have been with you all, with all these steps all along. Wow. And you belong to me. I would have reached down to the depths of hell and pulled you out. This was the... Because you are mine. Wow. And I knew... I knew at that moment I was born again and I was never going to be the same. And life was never going to be the same. Uh -huh. And the realization came that I have to remove my name. I now belong to the true Lord. And so my next step was removing my name. And, and I was afraid. Very you told much your afraid. husband, I'm sure. I told my parents first. Did you? That that's what I was going to do. And I remember my mom was screaming at me on the phone. What are you doing? Do you realize you're going to lose your husband? You're going to lose your children? Are going to have a father and a family? And what are you doing? Can't you just, just <laughs> worship on your own, but just live in peace? Your husband's a good man. And I said, I know, Mom. But, you know, Abraham made a choice. Yeah. Abraham was faced with a difficult choice. He put his only son that he'd waited so long for on the altar yeah. to sacrifice. And I said, you know, if my marriage is to be a sacrifice, then that's what it has to be. But he's going to be first in my life. I will always put him first. And so I made, this might sound really strange, but I made a pact with the Lord. I said, Jesus, I love you. You will never going to, you're never going to be second. I know you love my family because you blessed me with them. So I lift my marriage and my family to you. It is in your hands. If you can hold my every breath in your hand, you then you can hold my marriage too. Wow. And whatever it is, if it, if it means the end of my marriage, then I'm going to have to live with it. Wow. But you're going to be first. So.
I'm kind of speechless. It's just so joyful, isn't it? I mean, Very. to have that Very. confidence, that feeling, and and you don't. I, mean, I hate to keep saying it, but you just don't get that in no. the Mormon presentation no. of of what they they're doing. They just don't include Jesus. Now, the yeah. joyful news is that your husband, well, is starting we're to married, and he's comes to church with us. <laughs> he actually encourages my boys to go to their youth group and. And, at South um, Community and South, South, and Mountain, South Mountain, I mean. Mountain Community Church, yeah. and they're very much involved. My younger son was baptized about two months ago. As, his choice. As, as his choice. <laughs> um, no one came except for my husband and I, my mom and dad. But oh. no one was even told on my husband's side, yeah. um, and that's okay yeah. because it is for the Lord. It's not for the people. It's it's it's. My child's following yeah. the Almighty. Oh, He's following the King of Kings, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, my older son is 15, and he's also on the worship band, the youth oh, band. Wow. Plays guitar sometimes, and um, he hasn't been baptized, but he's a shy kid. <laughs> so the Lord will have to push that one along. But he's yeah. also very much very Christian. They both, my, both my boys. Yeah. do school at home through Liberty University. Mm -hmm. So they have daily Bible and oh boy. they most likely know more than I do. <laughs> They're learning a <laughs> lot anyway. Much. They're learning a lot, yes. Well, I know you've, gosh, it's such a tremendous rich story and to have that freedom and joy in Jesus is amazing. It's freedom, what, the ultimate word, freedom. We've got just a little bit of time. What would you say to your family or people, LDS? I know study was important to you. Yes, um, it's... The Bible obviously means a lot more now. A lot more. Yeah. And, you know, um, there is very vast evidence for the truthfulness of the Bible. Yeah. There's so much. Manuscripts. That's right. Dead Sea Scrolls. That's and right. All kinds all of All of that, yes. And um, I have to say, it's, it's in a simple way, Jesus is worth it. Yeah. What you feel you're going to lose you're not losing anything, you're gaining Jesus. And yeah. the peace and the joy and the knowledge that you are safe and secured in his arms forever. And forgiven. And forgiven yeah. and accepted and loved <laughs> means more than anything in this world. And it's oh, worth it. I'm so thrilled your husband is willing to come with you now. Yeah. That must be an answer to many prayers too. I, I still learn. I'm still learning. I yeah. was very angry and bitter. Yeah. Uh, I felt very much um, duped. Yeah. I, I guess I could say. Regina, I'm life sorry. Is good. Our time is up, but yeah, yeah, you kind of can feel a little anger, but we love you guys. See ya.